Hello and welcome. Today we are going to discuss a situation where we have a number of Hyper-V VMs and we would like to provide network connectivity for those. But we have a couple of requirements. The first one is we must have permanent IP addresses. That is, we cannot use DHCP or DHCP is not appropriate. For instance, we are running servers and those servers are running services that depend on permanent IP addresses. And the second is those VMs must be able to, to have LAN and internet access. So they should be able to talk to other devices on a uh, local area network. And also they should be able to, able to go to the internet and get services from there. So the solution that we are going to talk about today is we will create a new internal switch, that is a Hyper-V internal switch, and binding to a new NAT. NAT stands for Network Address Translation. So let's first, first of all, let's see what those actually mean. What is a switch and what is a NAT? So let's look at the uh, my home network. Um, You'll see that I have a cable modem, and on my right, on the right, these are my home, um, my LAN, and these are the devices that are currently running, a number of them. As you can see, I have two wireless devices and one wired device connected to this uh, router. And on the left is the internet. So the first thing, we need, we need a way to connect so, so my home network be able to connect to the internet. And that's what the router does. The router's job is to uh, route traffic from one network to another. And the cable modem also provides switching functionality. A switch in networking is basically a device that provides connectivity on the devices that are on the same local area network. So they can talk to each other and also it facilitates moving traffic between networks. NAT is network address translation. And the function of it is this. As you can see, my IP addresses on this side is 10.0. But on the internet, so these are private IP addresses that are not addressable or accessible from internet. So NAT provides a public IP address that internet understands. So any other devices on internet are able to see and connect to uh, this IP address. So when the call comes, when let's say one device uh, wants to get services uh, on like a website or web service calling on internet, when the call comes through the NAT, through the uh, from the router, which is the, uh, the NAT, and that's where NAT actually masquerades the internal IP address and kind of impersonates this uh, public IP address. So the services on the other side, they know what, uh, who's calling, and when the results are um, sent back, they know where to send it because this is a public IP and is visible. And then when the result comes back to this, uh, NAT has a, a table which keeps track of what device call where, which uh, service on the internet. And then, the results and then flows back to my machine. So that's a very high level view of some of this there. And obviously firewall pro protect our internal services from uh, hackers and outside access. So, and then down below I have uh, one of my machine, this one, my laptop. I kind of blow it up to see what's, what's going on inside. So I have Hyper-V installed, as you can see here. I also have two VMs install, and they are both uh, running Ubuntu. So I call them Ubuntu 1 and Ubuntu 2. So they are different VMs. So the, the goal and the, my goal and the goal of this presentation is to give these two devices access not only to the LAN, to the internet, but also be able to set my IP addresses the, the way I want to. So in this case, as you can see, the network range is 192.168. And then the solution is to create a virtual switch. Uh, this is Hyper-V virtual switch. 
And once we create that, it actually creates uh, an adapter. And that adapter works like a router or a gateway. So that will allow me um, traffic to flow from those two and all the other VMs that I might have in the Hyper-V, flow through NAT. And again, NAT's job is to provide an IP address that is understood over here by these devices. And then actually the NAT will use the IP address of my uh, workstation. So that would see, so if I call Ubuntu, um, one calls, let's say a service on this machine, when the request comes through here, through virtual, first of all, through the uh, virtual switch, and then goes for adapter, and the adapter then goes to NAT, and NAT kind of masquerades the IP address of 192.168 into 10.0.0.87. And then the communication becomes possible between those devices and uh, my machines here, or VMs here. And the same Ubuntu, if it wants to talk to the internet, then the same thing. It just goes, the calls go through the NAT here, the address becomes 10.0.0.87, and then flows through the box. Uh, so I have a um, wireless um, adapter that goes through that and then calls the router, goes through the NAT on this side. And then the IP, uh, the address of 10.0.0.87 changes to 24 dot star star star. And that's how uh, this machine will be able to uh, call the internet. So these are uh, going to give you an overview of what things are and what the terms are and what uh, we are going to do. So next we are going to look at my Hyper-V manager, look at those VMs, and then we go from there. So this is the view of Hyper-V manager on my laptop. As you can see, uh, there's Ubuntu 1 and Ubuntu 2. So those are the VMs that I talked about earlier and we want to provide them uh, static IP addresses and also enable them to connect to our LAN and also to the internet. So let's take a look at the settings and look at the network adapter. And as you can see, uh, it's not assigned to anything because uh, it doesn't have the switch appropriate for our job. So we need to create a new one. So let's go ahead and create a new um, switch. And then we can come back here and set it appropriately. And then we go from there. So let's go to Visual Studio Code. And I have prepared some commands that will help us create a new switch and also create a new NAT. So let's go through the code. On line two, there's a command, new NAT, new VM switch that switch name, and you can call it whatever you want. I call it lab switch, and switch type, in this case, in the internal. Um, I'm not gonna get into discussion of internal versus external, but for our purpose, an internal switch is needed. So let's run that. And that created the internal switch. And as mentioned before, when it creates the switch, it also create an adapter. And that adapter, works as a gateway for us so we can actually go out and talk to other services outside uh, the Hyper-V environment. And so we need to, uh, so, since we create an adapter, we need to also assign it an IP address. Like you, you know, add, when you add a new network adapter to your uh, machine, you need to set an IP address to it unless it uses DHCP. The same way here, we just create an adapter. Now we need to assign an IP address on line six, but we, we need to find out what is the um, index or identifier of that adapter. So on line three, four, we run net get dash net uh, net adapter, and that will provide us with all the um, adapter that is already on, on this machine. And what we are um, interested in is this one. The lab switch we just created, and it's 29. So I already added 29 here. So um, we need to create a new IP address to it. So the the, address, the command is new dash net IP address 
dash IP address and the IP address that, that we want to add. In this case is 192.168.0.1 and then dash prefix. Prefix is basically a network mask. So we are signing network mask of 24, which translates into 255.255.255.0. The last thing that we need is the index or identifier of that adapter, which we got from down below is 29. So run, let's run that. And that creates that. Now we have a functioning um, network switch, a new adapter, which has an IP address and we're ready to go. So the last part is to create a, a NAT. So, and the command is new dash NAT, net NAT dash name, and again, we can call it whatever you like. I call it lab net. And then the last part, it basically assigns, it says, what network ID should this uh, NAT be concerned about? And in our case, is 192.168.0.0. And again, a network mask of 24 or 255.255.255.0. So it's similar to one that we set up for our adapter. So this is a, uh, now we have everything set up. We just need to go back to um, the VM, a virtual machine, and um, try to now set that to appropriate switch that we just created. So let's go to one to one and then go to settings. And then look at the network adapter and the drop down, we will see our lab switch. So uh, just uh, it's worth mentioning that um, the, there's also a default switch and this is you should use this when you really don't need to set um, static IP addresses and you know um, so you should definitely use that you don't have to go through all this trouble of creating your uh, um, static IP addresses but in our case again the situations where you have servers involved and need multiple servers set up and those servers uh, DHCP is not appropriate you want to have um, permanent I, uh, static IP addresses, then this is the way to go. So let's say OK. Now we, we are going to start the VM and then uh, go to, once it's start up, uh, we go into Ubuntu one and sits its, uh, set its IP, static IP address. So let's right click on that and connect and say start. So it's going to boot up the VM, it might take a while. I'm going to pause and then continue. So the VM just completed its startup. So the goal is now to go and change the IP address of this VM and set it to manual. So we click on here and look at the IPv4 and we want to set that to manual. And the IP address that I'm going to set it to is 192. Dot one sixty eight dot zero dot ten and the network mask is two fifty five dot two fifty five dot two fifty five dot zero and the gateway is one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot zero dot one. So this is the um, the IP address of the virtual adapter we set up uh, previously. So let's apply that. Let's just start, stop and start the network service to make sure. So let's go to the terminal and let's say ping, try to ping one of the servers um, on, on, the, on the LAN. So let's ping uh, 10.0.0.44. And as you can see, ping is successful, so which means that I am able to now connect from Ubuntu One, one of the VMs, um, and connect to uh, the LAN. Now let's try the browser. So make sure that to make sure that we are also able to connect to internet. And so just say to Wiki, and now it's successful. So we have both LAN and uh, internet access. So 
uh, mission accomplished. So as you can see, it's not difficult to set this up if you need to. Uh, again, the key here is do you really need IP uh, static IP addresses? If you're setting up services, you most definitely need to have those. We can't really rely on DHCP. Otherwise, if you're just using you know, regular VMs and you don't care about static IP addresses, then I recommend using the default switch that comes with uh, Hyper-V uh, on Windows 10. So that's it for today. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I have other videos if interested, um, and I'll be covering Kubernetes in depth going forward. Uh, if you like, please uh, subscribe and give it a like. Thank you so much.